Hi everyone, Simon here with a review of Concept Destruction. Concept Destruction is destruction derby but made out of cardboard. <laughs> uh, it's available on the PlayStation 4 as you see on the screens, but also PC and Xbox One. Uh, the game is published by Rasalika Games. Uh, I do work with them uh, in terms of being able to get keys to review computer games for, but the reason why I work with them is that I actually believe quite a lot in their ethos. They bring smaller indie titles to a much wider audience than they'd initially get publicity for and they do that by shoehorning in loads of cheap achievements and trophies to get the trophy whores in. It's a cheap trick but if it gets games in front of new audiences and new eyes actually there are some quite good hidden gems in there. This had the potential to be one of those uh, but a couple of issues stop it from falling short from being a recommendation from me but a tentative one for some people who are looking for some destruction derby uh, vibes from their PS1 days. Yes I'm that old. So Concept Destruction has uh, a variety of different arenas. Uh, they're all kind of like micro machines where they're based in like rooms of houses and everything is made out of cardboard and like dodgy plastic. The idea around this is that you then have 11 other AI uh, opponents for you to basically drive into and smash and eliminate. You've got three minutes to do so and if you survive those three minutes, you and whoever else are left get to rack up the points that you've earned. You earn points by smashing into opponents at different speeds and at different angles, causing them damage, and also points for eliminating contenders as well. Quite often, if you're the last one standing and that three minutes is up, or hasn't reached up yet, then the event will come to an end and you'll just move on to the next one in the chain. And the championship mode, which is the main mode of the game, lets you just go around all of the different arenas as you go. The arenas are relatively well thought out and each one brings a different challenge to it. Some of them are open plain so you have to like run and hide. Some of them have like plastic trees in and things like that so that you've got obstacles to try and like maneuver yourself around. There's one that's a coliseum type stadium but actually there's a hidey hole so you can drive through it and then take the fight outside so to speak which I quite liked. Uh, and there's a couple of them that are really um, vertically driven so what you can do is run and hide like upstairs and then leap out over the side and jump and land on some cars and cause damage that way and that was good fun as well. The cars handle uh, in a very responsive arcade fashion I didn't have any problems with that and I quite liked the quirky way how you can turn on uh, if you get rolled upside down you can basically open up your cardboard car doors or engine bonnet and uh, boot and try and flip yourself back over again. It's a bit clunky, so there's like an auto version if you want it, um, but I did find that quite fun. Uh, there are a couple of things though that do mark down the experience. Firstly, outside of the arenas, there is no racing, there is no anything else. It is literally just an arena destruction thing. And it feels like they've taken a part of a bigger game and like obviously they're working on a smaller scale because it's an indie game and it's on budget but it feels like there should have been some racing element or something a bit better there. The other big thing that is missing is it's single player only and this game screams split screen multiplayer. Um, the game can quite happily handle having the 12 cars going on track. There is nothing to have stopped there being a split screen two car, car battle against each other even if you threw in like six competitors with four AI or something like that. That would have made this game's longevity really stand out and it could have been something that I'd have easily recommended at that point. But because it's missing, once you've completed all of the arenas, you've got a few options that you can kind of muck about with and then you're done. Um, and that's a real shame because actually the groundwork here is really quite sturdy and it's well put together. It's just that there's you've seen everything within 45 minutes to an hour max. And then you've got no reason to go back because it's just let's do championship mode again. There are a couple of options that you can change in the settings that can change up your gameplay though uh, and that mainly revolves around you being disqualified or penalised for not getting involved in the action. So sometimes with these games you can run and hide and try and get away with everyone else taking each other out and then you come in at the end and do the final polish off. The game is automatically set up to disqualify you if you don't ram into people every certain amount of time. Uh, and similarly, if you stay still, then you also get disqualified as well. So I like the fact that it makes you be active in the experience, 
but that experience sadly is over way 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 too soon so it's a tentative recommendation this one i think people that enjoy the arcade throwbacks to demolition uh, derby and destruction derby will enjoy what's here i'd probably say wait for a sale though because this is one of those experiences that's just over too quick so, any comments or questions, please do leave them down below. A written review will be over on higherplanegames.com. I'm now getting back to posting those reviews in a written format, so please do pop over to that website. And, uh, yeah, you guys take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a collection of media projects ran by me. If you like what you see and want to find out more, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support can make so much more possible, be that a like, a comment, a share, or a pledge. Thanks for watching.